in Blacksburg. The Huskers return home tonight for the school's 300th straight sellout. It's Nebraska and Louisiana Lafayette. It starts right now. Go Big Red! If you're not from here, if you haven't played here, then you don't understand what Nebraska football is all about. It's about integrity, yeah. trust, respect, teamwork, and loyalty. It's about history, the tunnel walk, the black shirts, the Heismans. He's all the way home! Holy moly! Man, woman, and child did that! Put him in the aisle! And national championships. In my mind, uh, you guys are clearly the national champions, and in your in your hearts, you know you are. 299 straight times since 1962. A sea of red has filled every single seat in Memorial Stadium. Tonight, it'll be our 300th straight sellout at our place. Through these gates, past the greatest fans in college football. Because to every man, woman, and child. We are Nebraska! We are Nebraska. We are Nebraska. We are Nebraska. And we will be forever. We're in Lincoln, Nebraska, Memorial Stadium for the Louisiana Lafayette Ragin' Cajuns at 2-1 and, and the 24th ranked Nebraska Cornhuskers also at two wins and a loss. The streak started in 1962 in early November. We're in the final Saturday of September 2009 and we hit number 300 as far as straight sellouts. The longest streak in college football. Hi, buddy, Brent Stover alongside Matt Davison. And boy, you were a standout wide receiver late 90s, early 2000s. You talk about tradition, you talk about history. This is a special day for this program. Absolutely, a special day here in Lincoln, Nebraska. You think about all the great coaches, the tremendous players, and of course, the loyalty of the fan base, 299. Now today, 300 consecutive times. They filled every seat here at Memorial Stadium. Truly, this is a special night in college football history, and especially for everyone who's ever had anything to do with Nebraska football. Well, this Nebraska team and Nebraska nation really uh, hurting right now in Blacksburg last week. One of those losses, tough to take. Bo Pelini called it the toughest he's ever dealt with as a player, an assistant, as a, and as a head coach. But you got to turn the page now, and it starts right here. Matt O'Hanlon on that Nebraska defense took a lot of heat this week, and uh, perhaps it wasn't quite fair. That's right. Unfortunately, Matt O'Hanlon has been the talk of the town for a play that was given up in the last minute and a half last week in Blacksburg, the fifth-year senior from Bellevue, Nebraska. Although he's been criticized this week, his teammates have come to his rescue. They've let him know that there were a lot of plays in that game that could have won the game for Nebraska a week ago. Nebraska outplayed Virginia Tech in a lot of ways. Unfortunately, that last play Matt O'Hanlon gave up down the sidelines has been what everybody has talked about this week. They expect the defense and Matt O'Hanlon to bounce back this weekend. You look at the other side of the football. We look at the quarterback, Zach Lee. His first start as a Husker quarterback last week on the road, third overall, first on the road. He only goes 11 of 30 for 136 yards. Not great statistically. He did do some things, though, showed some poise getting out of the pocket. However, Nebraska's offense in the red zone sputtered, settling on five field goals in the end. It wasn't enough, and Nebraska took a heartbreaking loss. One of the great traditions in college football is the tunnel walk here in Lincoln, Nebraska, and we head down to it on field level right now.
Savage is the Nebraska Cornhuskers looking to go 9 0 all time against the Sun Belt. They face the Raging Cajuns. The kickoff is yours coming up next. Back in Lincoln Memorial Stadium, 300 straight sellouts. It started back in 1962. The longest by a long shot. Longest streak in the country. Notre Dame at 207 is second. Bo Pelini's second season as the head coach. 12 and 5 is record. Sonny in 74, third member of our team is Kent Pavelka. Well, it was November 3rd, 1962. 31,080 fans here, including a 12-year-old junior high school kid by the name of Kent Pavelka right back there in the south end zone. We sat in what was called the knothole section. It cost us a dime to get here on the bus. The ticket was 50 cents. And I'm here to t tell you, on behalf of tens of thousands of Nebraskans who were here that day, it was a thrill. These players and Bob Devaney that day became our idols. It was a thrill 47 years ago. 300 sellouts ago. It's a thrill tonight. Brent and Matt, how about the play-by-play? -play? Kent, thank you. This place is electric. Every Saturday for 47 years. And Nebraska will kick it off. Fadi Kanalik, one of the best in the country, certainly a weapon as the kickoff specialist. Orki Zarini is deep with Marlon Miller. For the Ragin' Cajuns, it's taken three yards deep by Arini. And Arini chopped down at the 18-yard line. The tackle, Graham Stoddard, a reserve linebacker. The Huskers in their throwback 1962 uniforms. With the all-red jerseys, all-white pants, script numbers on the jerseys and the black numbers on the helmets. Chris Mason is the starting quarterback for the Ragin' Cajuns. A 6'2 sophomore, you see his numbers from Miami, Florida. And this offense for Louisiana Lafayette likes to spread the football field. And we'll see Nebraska in a lot of nickel. Give off the left side a couple of yards as we bring you the starting lineups. Backs and receivers for the Ragin' Cajuns. Up front first, it's Fisher in the middle with Bustle and Pirtle to his left side, Burks and DeCoster on the right side. Skilled players, Sales, McCullough, Lee Miller and Ladarius Green, a very good tight end. Nine catches for 118 so far this season for Green. First throw of the ball game and he finds his tight end. Out to the 32 and a first down pickup for Luke Aubrey, the number two tight end for this Ragin' Cajun team. And Brent, the starting center for the Raging Cajuns, Chris Fisher, actually will not play here tonight. So they move the right guard, Burks, over to center, and the backup right guard, Odom, starts at the right guard. So a big loss up front for the Raging Cajuns. Absolutely. Fisher on three different watch lists, including the Lombardi Award and the Remington Award. On the ground, they keep it, and that's Andre Sales, a senior. And Dominican Sue with the tackle. We'll call his name early and often up front, and they have been stout in the first three games. Turner, Sue, Jared Crick, who's been overshadowed by Sue, but they've been very good early on. The backers, Fisher, Compton, and Philip Diller. The secondary, Amukamara and Asante. Sales on the draw play. Breaks one tackle and out to the 37. Once again, Sue into the backfield, made first contact, but wasn't able to bring Sales to the ground. Got a short gain. Nebraska, as you said, in the nickel to start the game. Eric Haig starting there, the nickel back. Only two backers out there with Fisher and Compton in the middle. Third down and four with four wide for Mason. Out of the gun. Pass is caught, but short of the first down. The tackle made by Hay, the nickel back, as you mentioned. That was a first down saving tackle, no doubt. Should force a, fun, a punt from Louisiana Lafayette, and they are going to punt it away. Mason just a quick look to the left. 
and Haig was right there to make the play. Compton was there to clean it up. Only about a foot and a half short, but at this point in the game, you have to punt it away. Niles Paul stands at his own 35. Should say at the 20. Burkhead, kind of an up man here. He stands at the 35. Spencer Ortigo likes to angle his punts. It's that far side, and Paul gets away as it rolls down inside the 10 yard line. A 54 yard punt for Spencer Ortigo for the Ragin' Cajuns, and the Huskers' first possession will begin in the shadow of their own goalpost as you take a look at Bo Pelini. Mentioned the 12 and 5 mark, and you can see the intensity he promised his squad would come out full of passion here today. Yeah, he actually talked this week about how maybe the coaching staff was brought back up to a competitive level by the players. The players actually came in on Monday, fired up, and said, We're not going to let Saturday get us down. We're going to get ready for the next ball game next Saturday. Zach Lee had a tough one in week number three. Hillu had a great game, went for a buck 69. Averages 127 on the season, brought down here by Antoine Sanders, the Sun Belt Defensive Player of the Week a couple of weeks ago. And the starters up front for Nebraska, Smith and Williams with Hickman in the center. Henry and Jones on the right side. Rensky Gilliland. All three games has had a catch of at least 35 yards. They're waiting for one of these receivers for Nebraska to step forward. You saw McNeil. He's been the main weapon in the passing game in the first three games. Out to Niles Paul, running room for the first down out near the 20 before Dalen McCoy takes him out. Nice throw from Zach Lee. Just a little bubble screen out to the right side. Niles Paul was able to catch it and get the first down. Nice block from Holt. Davis, Dean, Moore, and Richardson up front for the Ragin' Cajuns. Fleming, I mentioned Sanders, the leading tackler and their best open field guy making hits. Marini is a very good corner, a junior from Florida. High snap, and Hillu gets the give inside and picks up three. Davis brings him down. The Ragin' Cajuns really want to stop the run here tonight, much like they tried to do to LSU a week ago. They have gotten banged up. We've talked about their schedule, but Kansas State two weeks ago, LSU a week ago, and now Nebraska. Three straight BCS teams. We'll see if the depth, the lack of depth, really starts to hurt them. Nebraska's offensive line was tremendous a week ago. We'll see if over the course of the game they can really lean on that front four and start to create some big holes for Hellu. They love to bring pressure from all different angles. They like to keep the ball in front of them. They don't give up many big plays. Only two to LSU last week. Drew Young back up tight end, running around across midfield. McCoy finally able to corral him, but not before Young picks up 33. Lee does a good job here, sitting in the pocket. Finds his man, Young, and he makes it upfield. The Raging Cajuns like to be aggressive at the line of scrimmage and then play zone behind it. So they don't give up a lot of big plays. You see it there, they did. They did have a deep safety. That was the only guy, McCoy, the last line of defense, or it would have been six. He talked about the banged up secondary, the two safeties out. A reserve linebacker, Jezreel Washington, starting at one of those safety spots here tonight as Lee calls his own number. Another high snap, two of them now from Jacob Hickman. You won't see that much from Hickman normally on the money, but just throws the, the timing of the playoff just a little bit. It doesn't look like much, but in that sort of play, when Zach Lee has to just take an extra split second to fake it to Hellu, it threw everything off. Saw so Hickman in there, 26th start of the career for him here today. They'll give up the middle again, not much. Hickman, a guy they say could be a very good coach down the road. Speaking of coaches, Ricky Bustle, eight year in Lafayette, 34 and 51. He was proud of the way his team responded with how ticked off they were last week after getting beat by four touchdowns in Baton Rouge. He felt like they had a lot of opportunities last week to really make that game close. So they walked out of there feeling pretty confident after their game against LSU. Lee with time. 
Finally, checks it down, and it's Mike McNeil. Catch number 10 on the season for Nebraska's prolific tight end and a gain of 12. And if Zach Lee is going to have this much time, it's going to be really difficult for the Raging Cajuns to cover for that long down the field, especially the tight ends. We see Zach Lee, the great presence in the pocket, the great feet. That time just kind of had to get it out quick before he took the hit. Delivered a strike, though, to McNeil. So it's a first and 10 on Nebraska's first drive of the game. And the Cajun 29, Halu lost the handle on it. But able to fall on top. Bad connection between quarterback and I back there. Could have been disaster for Nebraska on that play. Heller was able to jump back on it, but looked like there was just a little problem with the exchange. Never had it. I don't know if Helu thought he was supposed to get the ball there. Almost looked surprised. But he was able to get back on it, forces a second and long. So ball handling issues here early on. A couple of high snaps. Now a fumble. Brings up a second down and long. Play action this time. Deep over the middle. Good coverage in the secondary that time. Looking for McNeil running down the seam and Fleming in coverage. Well, that's a matchup Nebraska likes. You can get McNeil on a strong safety or a linebacker going down the seam. They like that matchup. That's a throw that has to be high and outside, though. McNeil never did get on top of Fleming. If he got on top of him, that's where you can lead him inside. Zach Lee needed to put that over the top and over the outside shoulder of McNeil on that play. McNeil with 32 catches a season ago. Single season record for a Nebraska tight end. On third and 11 for Lee out of the shotgun. Dumps it off to Halu with a running room. Can he bounce to the outside? Knocked out at the 22 by Nevels. Shy of the first down. That was a nice tackle out there in the open field on a pretty good running back, Roy Helu. The screen was set up nicely. Looked like it was going to be a first down. Knocked out of bounds just short, so Henry will have a shot to get Nebraska on the board. Henry from 39. He has hit 19 straight from inside of 50 yards. From the right hash, and he drills it. This guy is money. Now seven of eight on the season, 33 of 37 in his career. His quarterback calls him a little superstar. Henry puts Nebraska on top. Midpoint, first quarter, three nothing, Big Red. Back in Lincoln, 24th ranked Nebraska. First drive for the Husker offense, and they get three. 39 yarder from Alex Henry. Special teams player of the week in the Big 12. Hit five field goals last week. Huskers uh, would have liked to see him hit about two or three, I would say. Well, he should have had an attempt at at least one more when Nebraska had first and goal inside the five yard, five yard line. Ended up punting later on in that same drive. There are 11 plays, 71 yards. A solid five minutes, and how about that man? Larry the Cable Guy. An honorary coach. What does that mean, Matt? Well, he gets to go down on the sidelines, go into the locker room. Uh, it's kind of a new tradition Nebraska has established where they have guest coaches every week, and they are right there in the mix. And Larry, one of the biggest fans Nebraska football has as a suite here at Memorial Stadium. Grew up just about an hour from Lincoln in Pawnee City, Nebraska, not too far from my neck of the woods. Mm. So I've known Larry a long time, and he is a great fan, a great supporter of this program. Great to see him down there, and great to see all these big red faithful out here for the 300th straight time. Every ticket has been punched. For tonight's game, Arini takes it about seven yards deep, and that's the weapon we talked about in the kicking game with Kanalik. Henry and Kanalik, you talk sometimes in football that kickers aren't really part of the team. 
Uh, here in Lincoln, they are. They are, and, the, and they're popular guys on the team, too. You know, you talk to players, and they say, you know, kickers aren't always included in everything, but these two guys, really popular on the squad. In fact, Alex Henry, the guy you'll see him talking to more than anybody on the sidelines, before the game, in, on the buses, and Damakong Su, <laughs> the biggest guy on the team and one of the smallest guys on the team and their buddies. So nice to see those guys being included in, in everything. They're a big part of this football team. Absolutely. Mason and a Lafayette offense back out there, mishandles, falls on it, loses it again. They blow it dead here, flags all over the place. Creating havoc was Pierre Allen off the edge. On the offense, number seven, five-yard penalty. Right Delay there. of game against Louisiana Lafayette. That's a tough one to swallow when you give up a score. It's first down after a kickoff return and a break. You'd think they'd have had the first play called the and been able to get to the line of scrimmage. Yeah. Not exactly the start that Mason was looking for. He had a tough one at LSU last week, threw a couple of picks, just 16 of 36. For 159, pressure up the middle, and it's batted down by Andamakan Sue. Number six on the season for Andamakan Sue, batting balls away. He is just an absolute beast. 6'4", over 300 pounds, but he's a tremendous athlete. That's the, the biggest thing about him. Great feet, he's so fast and nimble for as big as he is. Last week, just a, a, a man in Blacksburg. They go back to the ground game. Sales taken down by Sean Fisher, the redshirt freshman linebacker. And Fisher, a guy Nebraska fans look to have a great career before he's all done. As you said, a redshirt freshman. Tall, long, tough kid. He's going to be a great player for Nebraska. Played well at Tech last week at six tackles against the Hokies. His linebacking core week by week coming along. According to D coordinator Carl Polini, they swing it out to Sales. And he's two yards short of the 20. Fisher again with the hit. Anthony West also came up and delivered a blow. So a three and out for the Black Shirts. That gets the faithful on their feet. Forcing a quick punt and a turn of field position, Nebraska should get it near midfield. I bet this defensive unit giving up just nine points a game for the Huskers so far this year. Only 86 yards rushing allowed for the Hokies last Saturday. More to go off the side of his foot. Paul comes up to take it at midfield. And Paul taken out at the Ragin' Cajun 43. Nice play by Paul to come up and make the catch. That was a, a punt that had the back end of the football was going to hit first, and it was going to take a hard bounce for Louisiana Lafayette. But Paul came up and made the catch and got a, a little bit of a return, but probably about 25 yards in field position by the time it would have bounced down the field. You got it. 32-yard punt, 7-yard return. Paul had that return early in the game last week for 55 yards that set up Nebraska's first score. Lee operates out of the gun. From Lafayette territory, all kinds of time, deep down the near sideline for Holtz. Incomplete. That was another ball that was thrown to the inside, Brent. Mentally cold. Running a streak down the sidelines. Had a defender riding him pretty much the entire way. Nebraska takes a shot, but that ball thrown to the inside. You'd like to see that towards the pylon. Let Holt run it down, catch it over the outside shoulder. There was contact. I think a good no call there by the official, however. That ball just needs to be over the outside shoulder. Solid coverage by Dwight Bentley. As you look at Holt's numbers, one of these receivers needs to step up, says Sean Watson. Helu takes the swing pass and runs away inside the 20-yard line. Helu down to the three. <laughs> 40 yards on the pass play. 
from Lee to Helu. Nice little pass to the flats there from Zach Lee. Once Helu made the catch, catch, Marcel Jones was leading the play. Number 78 makes a nice block on the edge. And once Helu got north and south, he turned it on. He has the great vision, uses his blocks well, gets all the way down inside the five-yard line. And he gets the carry off right tackle, trying to knife his way underneath right to the goal line. He might have fumbled the ball at the end of the play. He did lose it at the end. Then Cotton, the tight end, comes away with it. And it's touchdown Nebraska. How about that? Wow. Right place, right time for Cotton. In midst of all of the linemen in a big pile, it was hard to see. It looked like Pella was stopped short of the goal line. Then he comes out of the pile and doesn't have the football. Everyone's looking around. And here comes Cotton out of the pile, holding up the football. Six points, Nebraska. They'll take it. <laughs> Hello did the heavy lifting on that drive. A short one and seven points as Henry tacks it on. Hello gets a seat on the bench. And Nebraska with 5.03 left opening quarter with a 10-0 lead. Well, an impressive drive there. Obviously, the big play was Zach Lee to Roy Hellu, but it was all set up by the Blackshirt defense, getting that three and out, forcing the punt. Niles Paul making the catch on the punt return. That's just good, sound football. They give it to Hellu over the right side. Let's see if we can see the ball come out here. Hellu gets all the way down near the goal line. Hard to see from that angle. Somehow the ball squirted out before he hit the ground, evidently. And Cotton comes away with the touchdown. Ben Cotton, the redshirt freshman. Barney Cotton's son. Of course, one of the assistants on this Nebraska staff. And Cotton, one of about four or five tight ends that Bo Pelini will run in and out of the lineup. Ron Brown, the tight ends coach, just loves his guys. Loves this group of tight ends. They can block, they can catch passes. Very athletic, yet able to block at the point of attack as well. And that's the one thing they've really worked on this last offseason was pad Adidas level. The they knew they were great athletes. They knew they could run routes the and catch passes. The next step was becoming great blockers, and they did that this offseason. Now they're using them in multiple formations, two and three tight ends on the field at one time for the Huskers on offense. So it's 10 nothing Nebraska. They wondered how they would respond after last week. We uh, have our answer early here. This is just what the doctor ordered. If you're on the Nebraska side, because you get out to a 10 nothing lead, still five minutes to go in the first quarter, you want to put some doubt in the Ragin' Cajuns, and they've done that here early on. The Cajuns in danger of going seven straight quarters now without a touchdown. They have struggled offensively. Marini drops it in the end zone. He's got to bring it out here to the 10. Marini taken down at the 15. The tackle in special teams by Jace Dean. And this is just disaster. Looked like he was going to try to take a knee right on the goal line. Ended up bringing it out. And Cassidy comes from behind and brings him down. Austin Cassidy, back up safety, was able to come up with the play. And that is not a good sign right there for Nebraska. Man down Looks like is, Ricky Tenars. Yeah, Tenars the guy that Coach Pelini said he would try to use more here this week. He didn't get much time in the Virginia Tech game. And Ricky is rich, especially on kickoffs. But this looks like they're looking at the right knee. And I can tell you, if Ricky Tenars is laying on the field, he's in some pain and he's hurt. He's not a guy that, that lets the, the trainers come out and see him. Senior from Los Angeles. You see left side of your screen there. Mm. And you can see just went to plant and cut back to his left and planted off that right knee. You hate to 
guess what it might be, but definitely it just buckled when he tried to make that cut. Sometimes things like that can just scare you. Sure. As you see, he's getting a little bit of assistance, but definitely putting weight on both legs. You hope it's nothing major, but sometimes if it's a feeling you've never had before, it's a click, it's a little pop, maybe it's something he'll be able to walk off. You hope so because he's a tremendous special teamer and a guy, as you said, was going to get more snaps here today. They wanted to really work him into the rotation at safety. So here's Mason. This offense needs something. They moved the ball between the 20s all right last week, but couldn't score in the red zone. Aubrey in the flat, knocked out shy of the 20. And that O'Hanlon with the tackle. Nice to see O'Hanlon come up and make the play. Mason rolls out to his left. Aubrey out there in the flat, and O'Hanlon came up and really attacked that play. I like to see that aggressiveness running downhill, really running through the player, making a nice tackle down below the waist. Brings up a second down and five. And it's three wide. The give to Sales with the running room to the 29. And a first down for the Raging Cajuns before Dillard brings him down. I'm glad you mentioned O'Hanlon. He gave up that huge play, but I think this staff was pretty impressed, and Husker fans may not want to hear it, but pretty impressed the way he not only tracks the man down, who made the 81-yard catch to still give the defense a chance last week, but then makes a couple of big plays to give them even further chances to still win that football game. He did bounce back well, and you know, just one of those plays you wish you had back as a player. Deep and a man and a catch. That's Ladarius Green. The 6'6 sophomore tight end from Pensacola, Florida. West in coverage, but a great catch to go up and get it by Green. Well, that's just a mismatch right there and a pass by Chris Mason that was right on the money. Green has about six, seven inches on Anthony West and he just goes up and makes a nice play. Back to the ground, the right side it sails. Cutting through to the 34, Haig brings him down. 26-yard play moments ago on the pass and catch to the tight end. They continue to no huddle here. Trying to make this an up-tempo game. Get some momentum on offense, down 10-0. Pass in and out of the hands of Marlon Miller. How about that formation? Four wide receivers split out to the left side of the formation, two on the line of scrimmage, two off. Barry Turner kind of sniffed that one out early. Came off the, as the right rush in, just got right in the passing lane. Comes up, gets right in the passing lane right there. Got in Mason's line of sight. Forced the throw high. This time they go three wide to the left. And sails in the backfield. Time to throw from Mason. Dumps it off to Green again. And he gets shoved backwards and a late fumble. They say he was down in forward progress. They're going to mark him right around the 34 or 33 yard line. So this is in that area, the 34 yard line. Do you go for it on third and four? Nice tackle from Eric Haig comes up. Mukamara, Compton come clean it up. Forward progress was stopped, so it was blown dead. And it looks like Louisiana Lafayette might try a long field goal here. It'll be from 51 yards out. Tyler Albrecht, the junior, two for two on the season, will try a deep one. And he puts that one right. Partially blocked, perhaps, at the line. Albrecht had hit from 48 and 40 on the season, but unable to connect from about 50 and a half yards out. I think he might have got that one just a little fat. So that one landed about halfway into the end zone, and he has a better leg than that. I don't know if it was tipped at the line or not, but that's going to give Nebraska once again really good field position at their 33-yard line. Break time at Memorial Stadium, 224. Opening quarter, 10-0 Nebraska. 
300 straight sellouts in Lincoln. A memorable day at Memorial Stadium. Nebraska football in prime time. The Huskers and the Ragin' Cajuns, the third Sun Belt opponent of the non-conference. And this is the final tune-up before the bye week. And then it's at Missouri in 12 days. You see the throwback uniforms there from the 1962 season. No names on the back of the jerseys, the numbers on the helmet. Of course, now they do have names and they have the red N on both sides of the helmet instead of the number. Here's Rex Burkhead. Speaking of throwback on that topic, he's one of those guys you love to coach. He is just down and dirty, blue collar. Coaches love him, a true freshman. To be able to come in and play at this level, be the backup running back, says something special about this kid. He is going to, going to be a great player. Last week had a nice run after the catch against Virginia Tech. That, however, the first carry by any running back other than Roy Hellu since the Arkansas State game. And Bo agreed that he is a throwback type of player. Said he comes from a good family. You know what you're getting from him. It's deep down the middle. And a catch by Gillian. Kerensky Gillian inside the 25 of Lafayette. So Nebraska has taken some shots down the field. Zach Lee with plenty of time. Goes up over the top, stepped up in the pocket, and Gillian did a good job of adjusting to that football. He just goes right around the defender, up over the top with that tremendous speed, able to get on top of the defensive back and make the catch over the top. Nicely thrown ball from Zach Lee. 42 yards, and for the fourth straight game to open the season, a play of at least 35 yards for Gillian. Lee, after the high snap, goes down. Dalen McCoy covers him up at the 28. So some more ball handling issues. And if Dalen McCoy doesn't make that play against Gillian, he is gone. Zach Lee with another high snap from Hickman. We'll see if maybe they go to the sidelines and Hickman practices a few of these. You wouldn't expect that from a senior center. You see him kind of shaking his head, walking to the line of scrimmage, like, what am I doing? Honorable mention all Big 12 a year ago, the senior from Bakersfield, California. Lee for Paul on the deep post, right at the goal line, broken up by Arini. Right now, Nebraska's offensive line giving Zach Lee the time he needs to be able to push the ball vertically. And they're trying to hit some home runs here early in this football game. A little post route from Niles Paul took a shot at the end. Would have been an acrobatic catch, but I'll bet he wants that one back. That's not a bad throw from Zach Lee. Philip Nevels, the senior, laid the wood. Paul to the sideline. Three wide here on third and long. Dumps it off to Burkett, and he gets wrapped up in the backfield. 29-yard line, Sanders the tackle. He's fired up. Came in with 31 of those on the year. And it's fourth and long for the Huskers. He can flat out run. 6'2", 230 pounds, so he's got the strong neck in the middle. But he can run sideline to sideline, too. He ran Burkhead down with ease. So Henry now from 46. And he's able to draw it right in there. Alex Henry, now eight of nine in the season. And 21 straight from inside of 50 yards. And after five field goals last week, two for two so far tonight here in the closing seconds of the first quarter. So far in this game, Sean Watson doing a good job of mixing up the play calling, the play selection, 18 plays on offense, nine run, nine pass. So really keeping the defense guessing. A week ago, much the same, 36 rushing attempts, 30 pass attempts. So he talks about this offense, this, this multiple offense, as he calls it, the different sets, the different personnel groupings that he can throw out there. He does a lot with this offense, which is why the quarterback is asked to do much. And Zach Lee has done a good job so far this season of navigating that offense. 
Early on, nine run, nine pass. And probably five of those nine pass attempts, Brent, have been deep down the field. They've really taken some shots. So he was back on his heels a little bit last week. Is that what you saw with Zach Lee and just some poor decision making? Well, you knew going on the road for the first time there may be some butterflies. Zach Lee, though, a very confident kid. And I don't think his confidence is shaken at all from a week ago. I think he expects to come out here and play well today. Sean Watson flat out told us he did not play a good game. Missed a lot of available opportunities, but hasn't been the case so far here tonight. And at the same time, I thought in the pocket, he did show some poise at times, stepping up and finding guys underneath, made some nice plays. If Nebraska goes on and wins that game a week ago, everyone all week talks about how Zach did just enough to win. Yep. He, didn't, he didn't kill us. He threw the one pick down the middle of the field. But at the same time, that didn't really hurt Nebraska. They got the three and out after that. So he would have done just enough. 11 of 30, never good enough. But Nebraska feels like they should have won that game. And definitely it wasn't Zach Lee that cost them the W. Cajuns back on offense, final play, opening quarter. Mason to throw. Mason for Aubrey. And he's taken down after a pickup of three. And the clock runs out in the first quarter as Dillard makes the hit for the Huskers. Dillard and Nebraska's defense pitches a shutout in the first quarter. Hello almost got in. Cotton gets the touchdown. Huskers 13-0 after one. Nebraska with a pair of field goals and a touchdown. The streak began in 62. 47 years of sellouts in Nebraska during the final Saturday. In September, we hit the 300 mark. Bo Pelini, second year head coach. His team with a good solid first quarter and Jacob Hickman talked about what it takes and what it's like to come and play football at Nebraska. Well, I mean, uh, there's nothing like game day in Lincoln. I mean, I've been to quite a few other places and, you know, other schools in the Big 12, but I mean, the game day atmosphere when you run out there out of the tunnel walk and you know, you see the whole stadium in red. It's just, it's just something else. It takes your breath away. I mean, that's why I committed here when I was, you know, in high school. I just, you know, went to one game, fell in love with it, and then when you play in it, it's just a whole different thing. And he's had a good, solid career, but uh, a little bit suspect with some of those shotgun snaps in the first quarter. And now he's on the sidelines practicing those, those snaps out of the shotgun. But Jacob Hickman, very intelligent football player. You have to be in this offense to play the center position, helping all the calls with all the other offensive linemen. And he came in from Bakersfield, as you said. And it's amazing the number of players over the years, Brent, that have come to Lincoln to play for Nebraska from all over the country. And how many of them stay here after they come play here for four or five years? Because they love the city, they love the fan base, and they just fall in love with the passion that everybody around here has for this program. First play, second quarter, on a second and seven for Mason. Overshoots his man down the near sideline. Good coverage at time, Asante. Safety for the Huskers, along with Denard. So Alfonso Denner gets a little time at the right cornerback position. And you can see they're trying to use some of that size out there, the raging Cajuns, with their tall wide receivers and tight ends. Ladarius Green there once again at 6'6", working on a smaller corner and safety in, in uh, uh, Asante and Denner. Brings up a third and seven. Mason, down he goes. Cameron Meredith, the redshirt freshman. And Meredith is a player that just wants to get on the field more and more. He comes around the right side, uses that great speed. And Mason never saw him coming. The left tackle, no shot. And a great tackle from behind. He's gonna find himself getting more snaps all the time. He and Barry Turner really fighting it out there at the right rush end position. That is the first sack given up all season by Lafayette as Ortigo boots it away and this is a good one. Taken at the 40 by Burkett. Burkett. Down to the 27 of the Raging Cajuns. 
special teams once again paying dividends for Nebraska. A nice punt, but almost outkicked his coverage a bit. And Burkhead able to go back, make the nice catch with his hands down below his waist. Gets directly north and south, makes one cut and gets out into the open field. He doesn't mess around once he gets the football. He's going one direction and that's right towards the end zone. <laughs> yes, and he's sir. tough once he gets it. 45 yard punt, 32 yards on the return. Great field position again for Zach Lee. With Halu taking the toss to the left. Halu turns it upfield. Down to the 10 yard line goes Roy Halu. There's one of those formations where you see multiple tight ends on the field. A set that the Ragin' Cajuns haven't seen yet today, but one that Nebraska uses quite often. They overload one side, they pull a guard, everybody around the left side, and Roy Hellu had plenty of room to run. 21-yard run for Hellu. He's got 63 yards to this point, averaging nine a pop. They'll take it again, but it's blown dead. And that's just something you can't Final have. Snap. False start. Offense. Number 18. Five yard penalty. From a, a wide receiver. You should never move before that football moves. I mean, you aren't even listening to the snap count. I don't care how close you are to the formation. Holt lined up there in the left side, and you can see he just moves before the snap. He was worried about making that block, and that'll cost him five yards. And Nebraska saw this last week once they got down into the red zone. 0 for 5 scoring touchdowns a week ago inside the 20. That was a big issue. First and 15 now. Hillou tries the right side. And tucks under down to the 12 before Arini brings him down. Hillou in the offseason put on about 15 pounds of muscle. Lost a little bit of that back, but definitely thicker, stronger. Everyone a little bit worried that he might have lost a step by putting on that weight. Not the case. He thought he needed that extra weight to be able to carry the load for an entire season, and so far it's, it's paid off for him. This time, toss right. Cuts inside and down to the four before McCoy makes the tackle. That was just one block away. Ricky Henry, number 74, comes around the right side. And if he makes one block, it looked like Hellu might have had a shot to get to the pylon. Henry took it outside. Instead of cutting up, Hellu ended up going right underneath of him and ran into a couple of defenders. So now third down on the four yard line. They can get a first down Time inside out. the one. Louisiana Lafayette. But another one of those situations of where, yes, Nebraska is controlling this football game, but you want to punch this thing in. Yeah. Because as a team, you start to get inside the 20, and if there's multiple times that you don't score touchdowns, it can start to become a mental issue. And I'm not suggesting that that's happened already, but you want to start scoring touchdowns when you get down this close to the end zone. You want to prove to your guys that you can run the ball into yep. the end zone. Yep, no doubt about it. Let's head back down to Kent on the sideline. Well, Bob Devaney started all this. Bob and Phyllis, let's credit her and uh, their children here today celebrating the 300th straight sellout. Mike and Pat Devaney. Uh, how proud you must be, your thoughts and emotions this week and tonight, Pat? It's pretty amazing to be back here. It, it brings back a lot of wonderful memories. Yeah, the fans of, at Nebraska have awful, always been wonderful. And I think my dad, it's one of the main reasons he came here was because of the support of the fans and the people here in Nebraska. Let me ask you real quick about those early days in 62. Uh, did you enjoy Lincoln right away? Absolutely, it was a big, big move from downtown Laramie. You know, we came to the big city. <laughs> yes, it was actually, it was great coming to the school. We enjoyed it very much. Both of you are gone now. You're in Arizona, you're in California. How often do you get back? Every couple of years. Not as much as I'd like to. I get back for a game or two each year. Very good. Great to have you. Congratulations and uh, enjoy the rest of the weekend. Everybody loved your folks. Thank you very much. Thank you. Wonderful to be here. Thanks, wonderful. Pat. Thank you, Mike. We appreciate it. Children of Bob and Phyllis Devaney on the 300th consecutive sellout at Memorial Stadium. Huskers going to score, guys? Well, let's. Uh, we'll find out soon enough here on this third and three play, the ceremony before. 
the game and uh, what a neat opportunity for the fans to to uh, pay their respects to Bob Devaney's kids. I had the opportunity last night to host the 1962 dinner banquet. Mike and Pat both at the at the event last night. I had a chance to talk with the both of them and you know they just talked about when Bob decided to take this job how excited they were to come to Nebraska. Third and three out of the timeout. Nebraska trying to punch it in here. Lee with time. Over the middle, caught, touchdown, Huskers. And it's Chris Brooks, the senior from St. Louis. And good for Chris Brooks, the senior getting on the field more this year. A guy that came in with high expectations out of St. Louis and finally now paying off and he gets the touchdown. Extra point good from Henry. Sixth catch of the year for Chris Brooks. And the drive four plays and 27 yards. In a minute 59 lead to Brooks. Touchdown Huskers. 20 to nothing. In Lincoln for the 300 straight sellout. 20 to nothing. Nebraska with the lead. Early moments, second quarter, three minutes deep. Facing the third Sunbelt team of the non conference. You see Lita Brooks. Well, and credit the offensive line for this touchdown. Chris Brooks just worked along the back side of the end zone. He was lined up in the left slot. You'll see him work up, go to the slant, and then keep working across the back of the end zone. Give the assist to that offensive line, though Zach Lee had forever to stand back there, delivered the football, and never got touched. The attendance 86,304. All tickets punched, everybody present and accounted for. And that is a school record for attendance. How about that? Big night in Lincoln, Marlon Miller takes an E. Kanalik again creates a touchback. It'll be first and 10 from the 20 for the Cajuns. It's going back to Mike and Pat Devaney and the, the reunion last night, seeing all those players that were part of that 1962 team and the stories they had, just unbelievable to be a part of that last evening. Those guys in 1961 won three football games. And Bob Devaney came in here and he changed the culture. And he made them enjoy the game, and they came out and won nine games that year. Ended up going to the Gotham Bowl, yep. the only one ever played, and beat Miami 36 to 34 in that football game. Mason to Green, fumble, Nebraska all over this one. It pours for the Raging Cajuns right now. And guess who came out of there with it? Matt O'Hanlon. <laughs> Mason delivered a nice ball. Green makes the catch. Eric Hagan comped in there to get him. It pops loose, and there's three Huskers there to jump on top of it. And this one might get reviewed. I'm not sure if he had it for two steps or not, but this defense always trying to force fumbles. And there they do a good job of knocking it away in field position again for Nebraska. Tremendous. So it's Huskers ball from the 26 yard line. Lee over the middle again and they catch inside the five. And it's Brooks once again. 22 yard pickup. Zach Lee once again has time. Roy Hellu picks up the blitz. Chris Brooks just runs right down the middle of the football field into that zone. And Zach Lee found him right down the pipe. Brooks might have been able to score had Lee let him just a little bit more, but a good enough throw to get it there. And Nebraska once again with first and goal. How about those numbers to start off? You bet, eight for his first 11. And Lee wants timeout. Timeout. Nebraska. First timeout of the half. We talked about Lee's struggles earlier. Last week on the road, tough environment. 
he was so good in the first couple of weeks. And if you kind of read between the lines a little bit after our visit with Bo Pelini and Sean Watson, they were a little bit shocked with how shell-shocked he was. Right, and I think you have to give some credit to Virginia Tech as well. I mean, the first couple of weeks for Nebraska, facing two Sun Belt opponents, the quality of athlete, not quite as good. Um, you go on the road for the first time, it's a hostile environment. Virginia Tech, their defensive coordinator, Bud Foster, known, well known for really feasting on first time quarterbacks coming on the road. And they pressured him. Yep. And Jason Worlds on the outside for Virginia Tech did a tremendous job creating pressure. The offensive line for Nebraska did a good job in the run part of the offense, but Zach was under some pressure at times. And 11 of 30, he wasn't happy with that. Obviously, it wasn't the performance he was looking for. I felt, though, like it wasn't as bad as some people thought. Yep. I, I think whenever somebody had a chance to make a play for him last week, they didn't get it done. Out of the timeout at first and goal, Hillu runs out of room on the edge. And what I mean by that, is there were three or four passes last week against Virginia Tech that Zach Lee put in a spot that Nebraska's receivers could have made a play for him. Yep. And those plays that were on the borderline weren't made. You know, and quarterbacks need help. You go on the road, you're playing under pressure. If the ball's close, make a play for your QB. And unfortunately, last week, there were three or four opportunities those plays weren't made for him mm -hmm. when the game could have been put away. Mm -hmm. Mentally Colt, one of those where Back of the end zone, pretty good ball thrown by Lee. Couldn't hold on to it. That was on that drive with all the penalties and the touchdown that was taken off the board late in the third quarter. A missed opportunity, not just at six, but at three points as well. Nebraska again a timeout here on second and goal with 11-15 before halftime. So two timeouts called inside the five yard line. Maybe a little confusion, Zach Lee over there talking now with the offensive coaches, Sean Watson up in the booth, calling the plays. Cody Green signaling in the plays, the backup quarterback down on the field. Nebraska uses two quarterbacks down on the sidelines. Both of them signal the plays into Zach Lee. One is used as a dummy and one is live. And that's how Zach gets the play and then calls it in the huddle. So Lee brings him back out here on second and goal. 20 to nothing, Nebraska looking to tack on. Backfield in the eye. Legate the lead blocker. Halu dives in for the Nebraska touchdown. Well. Coach Watson told us yesterday he wanted to get things fixed quickly on this offense. I would say in the first half, they have done just that. That was just line it up and we're gonna run it right at you. We are bigger than you. <laughs> and we're gonna run it right down your throat with a lead back. Legate makes a nice block right up the middle. Hellu makes one little cut to his left. He sneaks into the end zone. Hickman with a nice block up front. And this is where you start to wonder. We talk about those three games in a row for Louisiana Lafayette against a Kansas State team that, you know, is physical. They're, they're not a great football team, but still bigger and probably more physical than Louisiana Lafayette. They get the W. They, then they go play LSU and get beat up a little bit. Now they come on the road again. And obviously this game is getting out of hand at 27 to nothing. But you wondered if this might happen because up front they're much smaller, they're not as deep. We asked Coach Bustle about that and about recruiting. And he said, you know, that's where it gets tough is the, adding the depth. We don't have the depth, he says, that a lot of the BCS schools have. Even though the scholarship limits have helped to create parity across college football, it's not always that way. And, he, and what he talked about most of the, that was the, the hardest thing about recruiting was they'll be in on a kid for a long time and maybe no, no team like Nebraska, Texas A&M, Texas, maybe nobody uh, that's in the BCS schools is recruiting that player. And you work on him for six months and at the end, you feel like you have a pretty good shot to get him. And then one of the bigger schools swoops in yeah. and grabs him. That's the most frustrating thing. Yeah. Ricky Bustle has done a solid job, eighth season 
Lafayette, Louisiana, three out of the last four years. They have won at least six games. Sunbelt champions back in 2005 for Coach Bustle. And his team is among the top three in the country since he got here in blocking kicks. They blocked both an extra point and a field goal in that victory over Kansas State two weeks ago. Well, he really has done a tremendous job, and Nebraska played now their third Sun Belt team, as you've mentioned, Brent. And, you know, it's a solid league. Yeah. And Nebraska's gotten a little flack for their non-conference schedule. I don't understand it one bit. You go on the road to Virginia Tech, you play three teams that were bowl, three other teams that were bowl eligible, two that played in bowl games. Yep. It's like, what else do you want sure. out of a non-conference schedule when you have to go through the rigors of the Big 12? We touched on Lee throughout this first half. How about the open receivers over the middle to this point? Well, he has thrown some nice balls, too, and we've given credit to the offensive line, but see how Zach Lee is stepping into his throws. He's moving up in the pocket, keeping those feet active, and he has time to deliver the football. 132 yards through the air already, only 136 all of last weekend. And feasting on a banged-up secondary for the Ragin' Cajun. Sales breaks through and gets big yardage. Out to the 30-yard line, right around that first down marker, Barry Turner able to corral him. Pretty big hole up the middle there for Sales. Barry Turner able to come drag him down from behind, but way too big a hole, 10 yards on first down play there. Under 11 in the second quarter, trying to bounce outside of Sales, but Indama Kinsu says no. Nebraska's front four has been stout all season long, led by that man in the middle of Damakang Su. And if they continue to play the way they have the first three plus games of this season, Nebraska's gonna be awfully tough to beat in any game the rest of the season, home or away. Anytime you can control the line of scrimmage the way they have, you can really create problems for an offense. Sue clogs up so much space, just creates all kinds of havoc. The bubble screen to Miller, nothing doing. And what it does is open up things for other guys to make plays, Brent, when you talk about Sue right over the top of the center and guard for the offensive line, they have to double team him. One guy is not gonna block Ndamukong Sue. So everybody else is matched up one on one and it also allows the linebackers to have great space to make plays. Getting a lot National accolades. Lafayette 0 for 4 on third down so far. The catch is made though by Aubrey. Breaks a tackle and out to the 46 yard line. Luke Aubrey, one of the tight ends that Mason likes to use, but a flag. Back at the 33. That flag came in the secondary, I believe. It's a 16 yard play if it holds up. An eligible player, Belfield, number 85. That's a five-yard penalty. The penalty third down. will take it back. Legal man downfield and negates a big pass play from Mason to Aubrey. And I think what it was is the receiver on the outside was covered up on Aubrey, making him ineligible. <laughs> so it was actually Aubrey making the catch, but he was actually ineligible because the wide receiver lined up on the outside was on the line of scrimmage. He needed to be off the line of scrimmage to allow Aubrey to be eligible to make a play. So it's third and long. The line to get is the 40. Again, deep over the middle. And again, the catch. This time, the other tight end, Green, out to midfield. And Green has been a weapon here this evening. Mason throws a perfect pass up over the top of Eric Haig. Once again, Green at 6'6", able to go up over the top and see where this ball was placed, only where Green was able to go up and get it. A gain of 26, and Green with five catches for 68 yards. Sales on the inside handoff. Gets a couple. Fisher the tackle. Nebraska's defense only giving up 9.3 points a game, as you said. 
but over 300 yards a game in offense. And that's the one thing Bo Pelini would like to see. He'd like to see that number come down a little bit because they haven't faced the best offenses they're gonna face this season. And if you're giving up a bunch of yards between the 20s, but then not breaking as this defense has, they've, they've, been, they've been bending quite a bit. <laughs> he wants to see that number shrink a little bit here tonight. Mason flips it out to number six, and that's Vernon Wolf. And Fisher in on the stop again. Fisher's dad, a walk on at Nebraska. She got Baker Steincooler, the son of legendary Dean Steincooler. A lot of families have seen father, son, brothers. A lot of families in, in the state of Nebraska have sent multiple players from their family through this program. Sales up the middle again. And Sue with the tackle. How about that call on third and four? We're going to give it to the first man through right up the middle against your defensive line <laughs> and pick up the first down, a gutsy call. But they were able to get it. That's going to move the chains. And a man down for the Cajuns. Glad you mentioned the family. And I, I think that helps with the overall family atmosphere. Talking about the entire coaching staff, training staff, PR people, football players, the family atmosphere around Nebraska. And that in turn helps out in weeks like this past week where guys have to come to each other's aid, kind of like we've talked about with O'Hanlon's teammates. Right, and I think that's something that's really separated Nebraska football from other programs, and I can't speak to everywhere else in the nation. This is where uh, I have, you know, the most history. But I can tell you that the camaraderie and the family atmosphere is, is just tremendous here at this university. The leadership over the course of these 300 sellouts, the 47 years we've spoken about, it's just really unbelievable. The leadership that's been there, you look at Bob Devaney and then Tom Osborne, then into Frank Solich, um, you know, they've been leaders of men and they've created uh, just uh, uh, quite a history for this school and the number of guys that have come through here, the thousands of players that appreciate exactly what they were given here, the opportunity they were given, and it's been made special by the fans that have filled these seats all of those games. On the first down, a rollout. Catch made at the 32. And that's Lewis Lee, the senior from LaPlace, Louisiana, his ninth catch of the season. Twenty-seven to nothing, Nebraska. Midpoint second quarter. Here in Lincoln. Final non-conference tune-up for the Huskers. With two wide to the right, and now sails the motion man. Quarterback draw. And a first down pickup before Asante. <laughs> Laid the wood to Mason. <laughs> Larry Asante this season is a different safety. He comes up and tries to punish you. <laughs> and Mason that time, I don't think was expecting Asante to come quite so hard. But he went, went in there like a bullet. Like a missile through there, Asante. And Mason able to get the first down. And it's inside the Nebraska 30. Here comes the blitz. Got rid of it and essentially threw it away. And this could be pass interference with a flag down at the eight yard line of the Huskers. Samukamara in coverage. And let's see what they call here. Nebraska brought pressure. On the blitz with Compton and Fisher no both. Pass interference. The ball was uncatchable. Second They're going to say that ball was in L, uh, uncatchable, I believe. Uncatchable, yep. Mason just had to get rid of it. Yeah. Bang, bang, play. He gets rid of it and then gets popped. But that ball was overthrown by 10 to 15 yards. Catch was not going to be made. That's a good call by the officials. Well, that's one reason he's only been sacked one time this year. He knows when to get rid of the football. Drew high praise from both coaching staffs. Lee mishandles the pass. Trying to set up the screen to the near side. And that was a classic case of Lee hearing footsteps. 
<laughs> that is a tough play for a wide receiver when you know there's defensive linemen coming out at you. Watch Jared Crick, who's going to be staring right down the gun barrel. 94. Lee sees him coming. The ball goes right through his hands. He didn't want anything to do with that collision. Third down and 10 for the Raging Cajuns. Let's see if Nebraska brings the house. They do. Mason over the middle. It's intercepted. Rory Asante across midfield. Asante. Nobody left to beat. He jumps into the end zone. Husker touchdown. is going to get the Nebraska sideline juiced. And now Asante is down in the end zone. I'm not sure what happened. I glanced over to the sideline after Asante scored. He's nearly 30 yards from where he went into the end zone. And don't tell me this is going to be one of those celebration injuries where you jump around with your teammates and something crazy happens. What a play by Larry Asante to come up with the pick six. Everybody focused on the celebration. And now you have your starting safety laying there in the end zone in pain. Mm, that does not look good. You hope it, 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 it could potentially be a cramp. You hope it's something like that where he takes off for 80 yards and then in the celebration, just the exuberation of going, you know, 75 yards. You, you hate to laugh about it, but <laughs> you you hope that's what it is. My goodness. Concern on the faces. You said it's 75 yards. And the pick six, some fine running by Asante after the catch. He just read that play perfectly. Mason looked right across the middle. Asante playing that deep safety and that's the difference in cover two in Tampa cover two as they call it all the defensive backs looking into the backfield and he was watching Mason there and made the pick went all the way into the end zone and let's see if we can watch him here as he's celebrating looked like he was fine up until that point it looks now to be like a left leg and you hope it's not a knee or an ankle potentially just a, a calf it might have cramped up on it. And anybody on this defense will tell you Larry Asante is the vocal leader of this defense. Yep. And Dominic Sue is obviously a leader, but he's a quiet leader. He leads by example. That guy right there, Larry Asante, is a guy that rallies the troops. He gets everybody ready to go every play. So let's hope that is not anything serious for Larry Asante. Henry banks it through. Nebraska up big. First pick of the year for Asante. 75 yards for the touchdown. 34 0. Beautiful night in late September. Nebraska up big. 34 0 on the Raging Cajuns. Here at Memorial Stadium. Offense, defense, both been. Clicking, you see this stingy defense, Nebraska, nine points a game so far. So good with that unit last week at Virginia Tech. Back down to Kent. Well, guys, the secondary a little dinged up right now. Ricky Tanars went out earlier, remember, and he's limping around a little bit on a right knee. Uh, and now uh, Larry Asante out as well. So that, if you want to talk about negatives, that's the only one I've seen so far through two and a half or one and a half quarters. Kent, thanks, and to that point, yeah, this is exactly what they needed as far as what they've done on the field, take away the, the two injuries, which we obviously hope aren't serious. And Alec boots it away. Nothing but into the end zone so far. They're going to bring it out this time. It's Miller angling near side, hops out to the 20. And Eric Martin ran down the field there, the true freshman linebacker, and absolutely blew up that wedge. He's a maniac on kickoffs. Number 46, 
He's going to be a tremendous player for Nebraska before it's all said and done, but he ran down there on that kickoff and ran right through somebody. That's where you heard the oohs and ahs from the crowd. <laughs> Celebration of Big Red Side. And the 1962 throwbacks tonight. This is Booker. He gets thrown backwards. Steinkuhler. Baker Steinkuhler, the redshirt freshman from here in Lincoln. Dad won the Outland and the Lombardi back in 83. And he, guy, he yeah. is a, a man child and a, as just a redshirt freshman, six feet six, over 300 pounds. And they expect great things out of him. And how about he's a backup right now? Mason, nobody home, but a flag in the secondary. Intended that time for Miller. P.J. Smith trying to cover him up. And P.J. Smith, another one of those guys that Nebraska really wants to try Back to get Defense. more Defense. snaps. Number 13. Another one of those red penalty. shirt freshmen automatic, automatic. playing First the safety penalty. position. And I'm not sure about that one right there. That appeared to be pretty <laughs> good coverage from P.J. Smith. I don't think you're going to see the Polinis too upset with that co with, with that coverage. You see the great size P.J. Smith brings to the field at 6'2 and 2'10. That's a big safety. Yeah. <laughs> they got Haig with size, too, the guy that can play the buck linebacker as well. Walker with the carry for the Cajuns. Yobis Walker. 5-17, first half. It's been all Nebraska. On second down and eight, they'll go four wide. And get some help from the sideline. They give the walker again, and he gets drilled by Meredith. And that's a tremendous play for a rush end to make. Meredith came flat on that play. He's lined up at the right rush end position. And see the angle he takes, how flat he gets down the line of scrimmage to get there to make that play. It's easy to get too far upfield and not be able to recover. Meredith took a great angle there. Meredith has made a couple of big plays. Defense here in the first half. Third and eight. They need the 46. They come up well short here. The pass is caught by Andrew Joseph. And that, I believe, is going to force another punt from Louisiana Lafayette. Or to go has been busy, their punter. And it's been tough sledding for Mason. And his offense, which has gone seven quarters without a touchdown, only scored three points last week against LSU. Ball waving everybody away from it. And the ball settles at the 25. 35-yard punt for more to go, and that's where Nebraska starts. Leading by 34. So 350 to go. See if Nebraska is able to use this four-minute offense and go down and get another score. How about these numbers, Brent Stover? Yes, sir. 260 and 39 overall. <laughs> 5 and 0 in the milestone games, the 50th, 100th, 150, 200, and 250th. I wanted you to get to the attendance number and see what you came up with there. A big number there, McNeil. I can't read that fast. I only got to the <laughs> second one. <laughs> McNeil, the tight end, will pop it up again. How about that? That's a lot. There's a couple of commas in there. <laughs> I wasn't a math major. Five national championships, 22 conference titles, five head coaches during that time. 75 different opponents from 35 states. And most of those have not had a lot of success. Burkhead now in the backfield as Lee takes his time. 
Lee with nobody to throw, tucks it and gets to the 40. Terrell Richardson, the tackle. And that's one thing that was talked about a lot this week as you look at the attendance number, that 22 million is, is that how, how the stadium has changed over those years. And Ken Pavelka talked about it a little bit, but how they've added seats and how they've been able to add to the stadium, add the boards and the ribbon boards and the, the scoreboards and all of that stuff, but it still keeps that historical look. Yep. It still looks like Memorial Stadium, especially from the outside. Now over 85,000 every Saturday. And they picked up 86,000 here today. 86,304 is Burkhead. It's about seven yards. 86,304 today, and that is a new Memorial Stadium record. This is a big night in the state of Nebraska. And to see a game here at night, and I'm biased, but this is about as good as it gets in college football. Mm -hmm. The four big screens, plus the big one in the north end, the new ribbon boards, just the lighting of the field, the way the field turf kind of shines. It and does course, look good. It, it really does, and, and of course the uniforms. The 1962s, how about it? Tremendous. You gonna bid on one of those? They are up I for might. auction now. I might, They all of the jerseys are online, and so you can go online and bid on these jerseys. You get the helmet and the jersey and the pants. I think in Damakong Sue's is up upwards of $2,500 or so. Yep, check Number your 93 jersey. I want to check with a wife before you uh, <laughs> check with a wife in the pocketbook before you get online to get one. I don't think I'll be bidding on his. But that money, of course, goes to, to pay for these uniforms and yep. helmets. It, not cheap to be able to get new uniforms for everybody on the team, new helmets and everything. Mm -hmm. It'll bring up fourth and inches as Burkhead needed one and got about two and a half feet. They'll go for it. Fourth and inches with under two before halftime. And Lee dives over, but movement before the play. And I think it was Kyler Reed, the right tight end. Try the snap, ball start, offense, number 25, five yard penalty. And it was, and Kyler Reed, the, the, the disappointing thing about that play is you're running a quarterback sneak. The guy that's lined up over you on the right side of the formation is not gonna make the play on your quarterback. No. When you're running a quarterback sneak, and I'll guarantee you that's what Ron Brown and Bo Pelini are talking to Kyler Reed about it's like son you have to sit in there and wait you're not you are not going to make a big difference on this play Lewis Lee back deep Henry finally a chance to punt here booted a 76 yarder last week and this is a boomer inside the five and it takes a Nebraska high out at the two An absolute weapon. Henry does it, game in and game out. It, unfortunately, some Nebraska fans, maybe me included, you kind of take it for granted sometimes. He's so good. 55 yards on the punt. And we look at the coaches down through this streak. Boy, some real legends on that Nebraska sideline to Vanny. Of course, then a man you got to play for. And then on to Frank Solich from Tom Osborne. Frank had six solid seasons here before moving on. Bill Callahan, of course, and now Bo Pelini, who is getting us back on track as a program. But Tom Osborne has been around for all 47 years. Mm -hmm. He has been the real staple. Bob Devaney, obviously, is who started it all. And a lot of people will say that they see a lot of Coach Devaney and Bo Pelini. And look at those numbers at home for these coaches. Tom Osborne lost 16 times in this stadium in 25 years. <laughs> Unbelievable number. Mason from his own end zone. And throws it away. And this Nebraska defense continues 
to put the pressure on the sophomore quarterback. 43 seconds before halftime. You talked about the comparison between Devaney and Pelini, both the intense guys, but deep down they love their players. You know they kind of have that soft side as we look at what's coming up at the half. Top 10 Husker plays in this stadium. Tommy Frazier interview. Stay tuned for that and more at halftime in 43 seconds. Third down and nine for the Cajuns. They keep it on the ground. Walker breaks out, but then gets ankle tackled. And looks, I think he's a bit Just, shy. Yeah, saved the first down there. It was Will Compton. And Nebraska's going to call a timeout time and force Nebraska. a measurement. In fact, I don't even think they're going to have to measure. I think he's short. It's really close. Compton with a great tackle at the ankles of Walker. Compton doesn't make this play. I don't think he's going to score, but it would have been a, a lot bigger game. And I think the Raging Cajuns got a pretty good spot there. I'm not sure he made it all the way to the 12-yard line. <laughs> That's where they have it spotted. Oh, and they do give him a first down. Didn't even measure. No measurement. So move the sticks here for the Cajuns. Walker has given this team a little bit of a spark off the bench. Sales the starter. Struggled at LSU last week. Did Andre Sales 17 carries, 48 yards. Well, they needed somebody to replace Tyrell Fenroy, player of the year in the Sun Belt on offense in 2008. Got it rushed for over 1,000 yards for all four seasons. It's been Sales who's done much of the work so far this season. Twenty-seven seconds to go. You'd think they might take a shot or two down the field if they really want to try to move it. Throwing it out into the flats isn't going to get it done with 30 seconds to go. Of course, they don't want to throw a pick either. Interesting call here on second and ten. And it's up the gut. And they will be content to head to the locker room. Down by nearly five touchdowns. And a big first half for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. After the one-point loss to Virginia Tech last Saturday. And Dominican Sue and the Husker defense with a big first half. A shutout so far for one of the nation's leading defenses here in 2009. It's sellout number 300 in a row at Memorial Stadium here in Lincoln. Streak that dates back to 62, and it's been a big night for the fans and players as well. And a 34-0 lead, and we head back down to the sideline for Kent Pavelko. Coach, 34 to nothing at halftime. Other than the two late second quarter penalties, uh, things look good to you? Uh, okay, I think there, there's still a lot of room for improvement on our side. Um, you know, we, we, we left some points out there. We, we, uh, we hurt ourselves a few times on both sides of the football. And, uh, um, but, you know, we obviously we like to score, but um, not, not, uh, not uh, overly happy with our execution. I would assume the challenge is to keep the pedal to the metal in the second half and not let up. Absolutely. There's no doubt about that. That's next. Yeah. Bo Pelini has the Huskers lead 34 to nothing over Louisiana Lafayette. Ken, thanks, and thanks to Coach Pelini. His team leads 34-0 at the break. Big first half for Hillu. Asante with a pick six. An interview with Tommy Frazier when we come back. Back in Lincoln, 300 straight sellouts at Memorial Stadium. A big celebration night tonight. The Huskers in the first half have been in a celebratory mood. 34-0, number 24, Nebraska with the easy lead. Brent Stover and former standout wideout, it's Matt Davison. And Matt, what were your impressions the first 30 minutes? Well, it was pretty much what the doctor ordered for Nebraska, over 230 yards of offense. Of course, Alex Henry gets Nebraska on the board to start the game. He is just money. And then Nebraska, a little bit fortunate. Roy Hell, who goes up the middle, looks like he was short, fumbles the ball into the end zone. Ben Cotton then recovers it for a touchdown. 
Alex Henry gets another field goal, and then Zach Lee throws a strike to the back of the end zone for a touchdown uh, to Brooks. So really, Nebraska doing what they want to do offensively. Roy Heller got a touchdown, ran for 80 yards in the first half. So offensively, it's been really good for Nebraska so far. All right, let's head down to the sideline for Kent. Coach Ricky Bustle with us, obviously. It's uh, been a tough first half. What do you need to do early in the third quarter if you're going to get this thing, uh, have a chance in this one? Uh, we just need to settle down and do what we do. I mean, you know, you don't sit there and turn the ball over against a good football team like that and expect to be in it. So, you know, what, what, what our goal is right now to try to win this second half. Hey, Coach, thank you. You bet. Coach Ricky Bustle, 34-0, Nebraska upstairs for the second half. Kent, thanks. We saw Hallou in those highlights. 11 carries, 81 yards, and a touchdown. We look at the overall team stats here. And what really stands out to you, man? Well, the two turnovers Nebraska forced is big because Bo Pelini talks to his team about that constantly. Uh, the time of possession, not a concern because Nebraska's moving the ball. They're getting first downs, and they're getting big chunks of yards through the air and on the ground with Zach Lee. So over 230 yards of offense. Nebraska really controlling things there in the first half. We begin the second half. It's Niles Paul from the six with his team up 34 to nothing. Paul tripped up at the 27 yard line and that's where the Huskers begin their first possession of the third quarter. Niles Paul, a guy that's been able to make some big plays in the kicking game for Nebraska this year. That's really where he's made his mark. They want to get him more involved in the offense catching passes, but he's been able to really show his abilities in punt and kick returns this year right there just a step away. Paul with one catch in the first half. They find a man on the outside. It's Will Henry. Quick screen to the wide receiver, and he gets little or nothing. Israel Washington the tackle. Will Henry, a junior from El Paso, Texas, one of about seven guys that the Huskers have tried in the first four games, waiting for one of their receivers to step up and kind of go above and beyond what everybody else has done. Mike McNeil, the tight end, has been the top pass catcher, top target for Lee so far in the first four games. And the Huskers starting out here in the second half with their backup wideouts with Brandon Kenny and Will Henry. And once again, a false start on Nebraska, and it appeared that it might have been either the tight end or the split end. Once again, those guys have to sit in there and wait for that ball to move. Throw the snap, illegal snap, offense. Five-yard penalty. Okay, Second I take half. it back. <laughs> maybe, maybe they did see the ball, ball move. It was an illegal snap. Yep. From Jacob Hickman. So a couple of hiccups for Hickman here tonight on the bad snaps, and then there are the five-yard penalty forcing a second and long. Second down at 14. Minute deep, third quarter. Nebraska with an easy lead here. Hello off the toss. Trying to pick his way through up to the 24. Fleming there to meet him. Well, Bo Pelini in the interview with Kent going into halftime uh, did not seem pleased with that 34-point lead. <laughs> Isn't that funny how head coaches are? That guy is intense. I mean, he, he wants perfection out of his team. He knows that the quality of opponent is going to get better and better once they get to the league and into the league play, and they can't have the false starts. They can't have the penalties. They can't have the breakdowns on defense, although they were pretty good in the first half. Yeah. Most people would be happy with 34 to nothing, not Bo Pelini. Lee finds Brooks again. Third catch of the game for Chris Brooks. And Brooks, they believe, could be a guy that could really be a weapon for, for Nebraska's offense as they this season moves along. There's Zach Lee under pressure and throws a nice pass to the outside on a little flag route from Brooks. He had to go up in traffic and pull that one down. So a nice play there by the senior Brooks. 23 yards. Brooks, the coaches say, has been unbelievable in practice the last three weeks. Now he's getting his chance to get some looks. In game time, play action, the rollouts, and the catch wide open. Kyler Reed. 
Little misdirection, Zach Lee fakes the handoff, rolls out to the right. We haven't seen Zach Lee get out of the pocket a whole lot here tonight, but they do, and they they find Kyler Reed who's gonna come across the middle. Zach Lee then rolls out to the right side, and he finds the drag across the middle from the tight end. Kyler Reed makes the catch. Another one of those red shirt freshmen that Nebraska feels is really gonna make a big impact down the road. One of the best athletes on the, on the team, maybe the best athlete pound for pound, Kyler Reed. He's the fourth tight end to touch the ball tonight for the Huskers. And down goes Lee back at the 43 yard line. Big hit by Tyrell Gaddies. So Lee, they've been able to keep him clean most of the night, not that time. Well, that was just a blitz that was not picked up. McCoy came through, got a piece of him, and really Zach Lee didn't have a, a chance on that play. That was not his, his fault. Gaddies uninhibited all the way to the quarterback. And those are the breakdowns Bo Pelini is talking about. Pick up blitzes, do the small things, don't have those mental mistakes. That was one there. Lee to Helu. Tackled immediately at the 40 by Sanders. Well, they have been hyping Sanders this week, and he has lived up to the hype. He's the middle linebacker for the Cajuns. He can play for anybody in the country. Yeah. 6'2 and 230, and you can run sideline to sideline the way he does. He can play. Had 15 tackles in that game against K-State. And he upset Lee 14 of 17. On third and 14, the line to get is the 26. Lee gonna tuck it. Lee inside the 30, penalty flags as he gets right near the first down marker. That's back in the neighborhood of a potential hold. Might take it back. Lee would have been short of the first down by a couple of yards, I think. Maybe one yard. A nice scramble, but it's coming back. Holding. Holding of the Number Huskers. 10-yard penalty, third down. This is going to be awfully long on third down. You're going to see a hold right, I believe, in the middle of the screen. On the right side, I believe it's right over there, and it might have been Keith Williams. Williams, a guy that was injured. Missed uh, much of the first two games. Came back last week. So Lion was pretty solid against Tech. They've been pretty solid here tonight. Marcel Jones at right tackle. He singled him out with the coaches. Opalini said he played a great game against the Hokies. Third and 24. Open man and the catch. Gillian at the five. And that's gonna be a helmet-to-helmet -helmet hit, I believe, and help Nebraska out even more. How about Zach Lee buying time for his wide receivers down the field? He rolls out, he knows where the line of scrimmage is. He stays behind the line of scrimmage and delivers it down the seam. Gillian does a good job of keeping his route alive, working down the field. Personal foul on the defense. Number two, helmet-to-helmet -helmet contact. Half the distance to the goal. And exactly what it was, helmet to helmet hit. Yep, you nailed it's it. It's the wide receiver that doesn't have time to protect himself, and you see it right there, right under the chin. Orkiz Arini, guilty of the infraction. Gillian now with two catches. That one went for 44. His first one went for 42 yards. First and goal. Hello. Pretty good defense right up the middle from the Ragin' Cajuns. Forcing second down. Now they bring in the fullback, Legate. Legate made the block to usher Halu in for the touchdown late in the second quarter. 34-0 Nebraska. And second goal, they'll shift it, Legate. He's in there. Hello the carry. And the tackle by Fleming. 
Fleming was lined up at the right rush end. And when I talk about taking a great angle on the line of scrimmage, it's exactly what Fleming did on that one. He ran the play down from the backside. He comes flat and is able to run down Roy Hellu from the right side of the defense. Look at that, that angle. Otherwise, it's a touchdown for Hellu. He waltzes into the end zone. So here it is, third and goal from the two. It's Hellu, off right tackle. In on his feet, touchdown, Nebraska. I don't think he was touched on that one. That's Nebraska's offense saying, this is who we want to be when we get inside the five yard line. Yes, they would have liked to score it on first down, but they kept leaning on that offensive line and saying, hey, we're gonna pound this thing into the end zone. That's a mentality you have to to get as an offensive line. And after last week, they come out here tonight and prove it, hey, this is the way we're gonna play when we get down here. And now it's 41 to nothing. Nebraska with a big lead. Coach Pelini wanted better execution in the second half. How about a 10 play 73 yard drive? Chewing up 618, 41 nothing. All Nebraska here tonight. The Huskers at home with their final non-conference tune-up. They lead by that score. 8.36 left in the third. On a beautiful night, long drive. Hillu with his second touchdown of the night. Big 12, well represented again here in 2009 in the rankings. Missouri and Texas Tech just outside the polls. If we look at the USA today, Texas, Oklahoma in the top 10. And Oklahoma State, Kansas, Mizzou, and Nebraska. I was talking about Missouri being just on the outside. That would be in the AP poll, but obviously the top 25 in USA today. And that is going to be a matchup. Could help decide the Big 12 North Championship. A Thursday night showdown in Columbia. A difficult place to go play. No doubt Nebraska fans don't really enjoy going there. And they don't like having us. Julian Schenkel gets blown up at the 11. Austin Cassidy, the first man there. Nebraska's kickoff team gave up a big one to start the Virginia Tech game last week, but since has been good. Cassidy has been a, a tremendous special teamer this year, along with Eric, Eric Martin. Remember number 46. Yeah. He's going to be on the field a lot the next three years on defense. You had him pegged in the first half. That ain't the first time. That isn't the first time he's been involved in a special teams hit tonight. Back at quarterback, Brad McGuire into the game for the Raging Cajuns. And you start with a run up the middle. McGuire, a 6'2 sophomore, Gulf Breeze, Florida. Hasn't played much. Quarterback position, one of those question marks for this team coming in. Talking about Michael Decimo, Offensive Player of the Year in the Sun Belt in 2008. Yeah, they had the quarterback battle, and Mason won out. And has played OK. This is a game now at this point as nice tackle made there by Barry Turner in the backfield. That'll be a loss of a, about a yard on the play. But this is a game now that's turned into exactly what Nebraska wanted, a chance the last seven minutes here of the third quarter and then the entire fourth quarter to get a lot of guys snaps that maybe haven't played much this year. Defensively and offensively. Mm -hmm. Guys that you never know at what point in the season, if you have an injury, you don't want to have somebody coming in off the bench who hasn't played at all. So this is where you really add to that depth and give those guys that are your backups a real taste of live action in game competition. On third down and seven. Incomplete drop ball by Marlon Miller. Make it Joseph, the sophomore from Florida. And it's punt time again for the Raging Cajuns. And 
Joseph was wide open. I mean, that is about as bad a drop as you're going to see. There was no one within 10 yards of him. Some guys don't like going across the middle. You, on the other hand, <laughs> as Ortigo boots it away. And Niles Paul takes at the 44. Paul circling. It's a couple of blocks. They can't get the edge. A lot of running to get to the 43. Thirty-nine yard punt, minus one on the return. Oh, Polini looks on with a 41 nothing lead. Did you still go over the middle at, uh, at your age? What are you, 30? <laughs> You'd still go over, wouldn't you, and take a hit? It would just take me a lot longer to get there now. <laughs> you know, we, we ran the ball so effectively, most of the time when we did throw it, I was running wide open, so I didn't really right. have a lot to worry about. <laughs> yeah, I don't know a lot of receivers that really enjoy going across the middle, running in between linebackers. But check out those numbers yeah. right there. Since 1970, Nebraska with a pretty stout lead there. Yeah. Uh, 27 over Michigan. All time Nebraska. Of course, as most Husker fans know, one of six programs to go over 800 wins in the history of the program. Of course, you were a part of that 97 national title team. The last one, you know, now 12 years ago, and everything that's happened since then is just unbelievable. The, the three head coaches, the ups and downs, there ha there's definitely been some of those. After a run in college fo football that will never be seen again. A 60 and three run where Nebraska won three national titles in four years, played in four out of five national championship games in the mid 90s. And that man, Bo Pelini, wants to get this team back into that arena, playing for championships, conference championships, and national championships. And this is a good chance for it here in 09 is Cody Green, the freshman. And Dayton, Texas takes over at quarterback. Big physical guy, good athleticism. He's got Burkhead in the backfield. They start with a screen. And it's out to Antonio Bell. And Antonio Bell is another one of those players that they believe could be special. Still young, trying to learn the offense. Makes the play there. Cody Green, five of nine on the season. Had the great run earlier this year in the opener, had everybody talking about the potential he has. He looks like a leader. He looks like a quarterback, 6'5", big, strong kid. He can run, and he's got a big arm. Uh -huh. Mishandled handoff ends up in Green's hands, and he goes down. His first carry this year, 49 yards on the run. You mentioned it, the facets that he provides, five of nine through the air. And here another ball handling issue, Burkhead and Cody Green. You're going to see that combination in the backfield sometime down the road for Nebraska. Those are the things that as an offensive coordinator, Sean Watson does not want to see that. When you get your backups in the game, you want to see execution. You want to see, you don't want there to be a drop off. And just as I say it, wow. An errant snap. Caputo, the backup center, is in there now, and it'll be fourth and a mile and a punt coming up for the Big Red. Just a miscommunication on the, on the snap count there. Caputo, it was a nice snap, just past the right hip of Cody Green, but Cody was not expecting that snap to come at that point. Henry from his own five. With Lewis Lee back deep. Henry booms this one. And oh, Lewis good. Lee gets drilled. And a penalty mark. The Cajuns end up on top of the football, but a flag. Chase Dean with a huge hit after the 46-yard punt. 
You know what? You know why they call those guys on the outside bullets on punt team? Because of that. Because of this. Jace Dean had no one in front of him, no one to protect the punt returner, and he was a bullet. The timing was perfect. Right when the catch was made, he leveled him. Bo Pelini making the case that it was that he gave him the proper space. It looked to make like the catch. perfect timing. It really did. It said. did not look like it should have drawn a flag. Let's see what they say. Personal foul. Well, and Bo Pelini doesn't like that one, obviously. Let's see what time, when the ball gets here. Oh my goodness, he's got four yards. Perfect. Three yards for sure. It was not helmet to helmet contact. Let's see if the helmet's hit. I just think that's a bad call. And obviously this game is put away, so it's not about that, but it's about making the right call, and allowing these players to play. What a play by Jace Dean. 15 yards. Yobis Walker, the play fake. And in the flat, Aubrey makes the catch and gets a first down. And that's the type of play that can really get a, a special teams unit fired up. You guys they, they aren't over there right now worrying about that 15-yard penalty, I'll tell you that right now. They're over there celebrating the big hit. Well, a guy like Dean, who that's... That's what he does, is play special teams. He's been waiting all week to make a bone-jarring hit like that, and he did it perfectly. And don't think Bo Pelini isn't looking at the scoreboard and seeing that goose egg up there. He sees 41 to zero, and that's the way he wants to keep it. That 15 yards now at first down, all of a sudden they're in Nebraska territory banging on the door. McGuire on the keep, and another first down. Move the chains for the Ragin' Cajuns. P.J. Smith levels him, but not before he gets what he needs. That was just a good play fake. Nebraska, a little out of whack there on their responsibilities. Now another first down. Nebraska hasn't had a shutout, Mr. Stover, since September 23rd of 06. Mm. This could be it tonight as we move under four minutes in the third. Incomplete intended for Joseph again. That was the shellacking of Troy as they came to town. On a similar path as Louisiana Lafayette, they had played three straight games against BCS opponents and were a little beat up when they came to Lincoln. And they got even more beat up, 56 to zero. This looking much like that game. Ricky Bustle said, we're not coming in here for a moral victory and we won't get caught up in the hoopla. They did, however, come in banged up. McGuire picks up six. Did he get stripped away? Looked like the ball came out, and then Prince of Mukamaro is going after the the fumble. Had a player dive in, and I think took him out right in the knee, and he's going to hobble off. It looked like the ball came out. I thought so too. See if Amukamara takes a shot to the knee after this play. He makes the hit, pulls the ball out, and then I think someone comes flying in and, yeah, right there. Yeah. Takes a helmet to the thigh, it looked like. On third and five, McGuire from the gun. Pass is caught in the flat. Another first down to the 16. And now That's definitely, trailing. definitely in field goal range at this point. Inside the 20 yard line. This play set up pretty well by that offensive line. They really sold pass pro and then slipped it out there for the delayed screen. Uh, to Draylon Booker, redshirt freshman, one of three backs we've seen. Touch the ball for the Cajuns here tonight. Another first down from the 17. Tripped up is Booker, ball free. Picked up by the Huskers. Back the other way, John Fisher. 
Oh, and Sean Fisher is going to have a word with P.J. Smith after the game because I think he was going about 85 yards for a touchdown. P.J. Smith trying to get out in front of Fisher to help him block, help throw a block for him, and instead tripped up his own man. Let's see who caused the fumble. Definitely it was out before before he was down. Gomes, Dejon Gomes, I think, yep. caused that fumble. Fisher up with it, and I think he was going to score. Watch P.J. Smith trying to get around him to go help block. <laughs> Trips him up. Cody Green, the give to Burkhead with a running room. First down and more. A pickup of 12 on first down. So the shutout is still intact. After the third force turnover by Nebraska. Good running, good hard effort by Burkhead. It was a 20 yard return by the way. The fumble recover for Fisher as Burkhead gets free again into Cajun territory. 20 yard return, but as you said, it maybe could have been about 85. <laughs> He's going to say he would have scored, you know. Oh, Looked like, sure. uh, I think it was Green, the tight end, might have had a shot at getting him. He was the last of offensive player that turned defender after the, the fumble was picked up by Fisher. But Fisher, he'll say that he would have outrun him. On second and one, Burkhead gets it. McCoy the hit. Well, what do you what do you like when you see the freshman Burkhead? I like the pad level. When he's coming at you as a defender, all you see is thighs and shoulder pads. You don't see anywhere in the midsection where you can hit. You don't see his waist. He's about 5'9", but he's a bowling ball at 205. And that's all you see coming at you. He doesn't cough up the ball. He doesn't fumble. He's tough as nails. They called him Superman in high school. Green swings it out. Burkhead again, and he's met right there. Jezreel Washington, first man for Lafayette. No chance there for Burkhead. Once he caught it, there were two defenders on top of him. There might have been one where Cody Green made up his mind before the play. This is where I'm going to go with it. And that's where you get maybe a little inexperience there at quarterback. Probably not the place he was supposed to go with the ball as Burkhead had, a, had two defenders on top of him. Second and 14 with 30 ticks in the third quarter. Over the middle, the bullet is caught. Kyrie Cooper. It'll make third down a lot more manageable. And that was kind of a sidearm sling from Cody Green as he had pressure up the middle. He finds Kyrie Cooper's lined up there in the left slot, runs a quick slant to the middle. That's a nice catch with a man draped all over him. I like Kyrie Cooper. I think he has a great, a great future in front of him. I, I, I see great feet and great hands from him. And when I look at a wide receiver, that's what I look for. He's going to be special. Cooper, just a freshman red shirt from Shreveport, Louisiana. Nebraska clicking tonight. Big plays all over the place. Hello, his night might be done. It was big. 41-0 Huskers after three. We begin the fourth quarter in Lincoln. At historical nights at Memorial Stadium. 41-0 Huskers with 15 to play. And that man is Sergeant Andrew Hyde. He's been in Afghanistan for nine months, plans to be back on U.S. soil next June. And Andrew Hyde has started up quite a friendship with Nebraska defensive coordinator Carl Pelini. They write back and forth. Coach Pelini mailed him a bunch of Nebraska swag to share with uh, he and his mates over overseas and uh, really a nice story and Carl came in yesterday and wanted us to acknowledge Andrew Hyde he's able to uh, at least listen to every 
Nebraska football game and very important for him to kind of have that connection. And I think uh, Carl Pellini has really put it in perspective as well. Well, Carl Pellini and, and this entire Nebraska staff, just really good men, you know, and and uh, you know, that's just an important friendship to Carl and of course our troops overseas. We want to give a great shout out to them and many Husker fans that are over there as well listening on the Husker Sports Network on the internet every single week. As we start the fourth, Bass is caught by 82 and that's Wes Kamek. Another wide out, Nebraska has now hit 10 different receivers tonight. Cody Green, a little fake to the right side, comes back to Wes on the left side for a short gain that's gonna force a punt. Henry, one of those guys that continues to get to play even when the game's out of hand late. Angles it nicely to the far side and out of bound. No, it never reaches the boundary. Instead, it's at the one. Good special teams play and good coverage. At 26, Tim Marlowe, a reserve wideout. The placement couldn't have been any better. Marlowe does a great job of getting down there. That's exactly how, what you want to do. Get down to the goal line, turn your back to the goal line, and look for the football. Let's head down to Kent with a special guest. Well, Nebraska's own Dan Whitney, better known as Larry the Cable Guy, is with us. He's the honorary coach tonight, along with uh, Tommy Frazier. I heard a, a nasty rumor that the Polinis have stolen your material, that all they're saying at practice now is get her done. <laughs> they have, and they owe me $35,000 right now. <laughs> I've been doing a good job coaching, I gotta tell you. I've uh, given us 41 points. I've left the rest up to Johnny Rogers. We'll see how he does in the fourth quarter. Which place did you call? Every one of them. <laughs> <laughs> I called the 0350 split and the 285Y and the square 26. I had them all in there. Talk just a second, seriously, uh, about growing up in Nebraska and kind of being a regular guy until all this stardom occurred and being a Nebraska fan. Uh, you know what? It's amazing. I mean, I grew up in Pawnee City, Nebraska, and, you, you know, you grow up in Nebraska, you're a huge Nebraska fan, and just being able to be able to come in here and be a part of it, stand on the sidelines is total dream come true for me. I mean, I'm living in a fantasy world, so this is the ultimate. It's uh, uh, better than anything I've ever done. What kind of player was Larry the Cable Guy? Oh, I was a four-sport athlete. I could, uh, you know, Burger King, McDonald's, you know, Taco Bell, and and Pizza Hut, uh, all four of those things, I did pretty well. <laughs> I want to. I want to be serious for a second. Let's talk to Dan for a second. Uh, I want you to plug your your foundation. Yeah, the foundation. I started the Get It Done Foundation, and uh, I'm linked in with the uh, Child Advocacy Center here in Lincoln, uh, Nebraska, and the Arnold Palmer Children's Hospital Orthopedics in uh, Orlando, Florida. And it's a great foundation. And if anybody ever wants to give to a good foundation, that'd be one right there. Hey, call this play for us, Larry. Do your best. Kent Pavelka. Oh, the best Kent Pavelka. All right. The quarterback under the center. Crowd is yelling. He stunts, making the calls. He's trying to draw him off sides, I think, is what he's trying to do. Now he changes the play. The crowd is really loud down here. I can't even hear myself. They're just going to try to bring it out. They're just going to. Quarterback snake through the middle, pick up of about two yards, <laughs> and it'll be second on eight. You trying to tell me I was a puker back in the day? <laughs> <laughs> That's my be my best cap of elk is uh, I got an alarm clock with you on it. So when I set the alarm clock, I wake up to touchdowns, Corey Schlesinger. <laughs> Larry the Cable I, I Guy. That, I hear that every morning. Touchdown, Corey Schlesinger. Hey, thanks for all you're doing. Oh, thank you, Kent. Thanks for having me on, and go Huskers. All righty. There's uh, Larry the Cable Guy, boys. Phenomenal. <laughs> I, I don't know what to say the rest of the fourth quarter. <laughs> Does it get any better than that? Great job down there, Kent. I have to say, it, it, he's a he's a tough man to interview because you, you spend the, the entire time laughing. I I had the opportunity last year to we had him in the booth and we were talking to him and I mean we're on camera the whole time and 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 I was laughing so hard that I couldn't hardly get the next question out. <laughs> the man is hilarious. I like it when Kent says, "Well, be serious for a minute." And, yeah, right. Sure. <laughs> Does he have the ability? Yeah. <laughs> it's serious here for the Cajuns. Third and six. At their own goal line, the roll out for McGuire. And it's broken up. 
In the secondary, it's Austin Cassidy. Cassidy, the backup safety, doing a great job. He's a tremendous special teamer coming over the back there of the wide receiver, Joseph. And that was just a, a good job of going around him without running through the offensive player. If he runs through Joseph, he gets the flag. He went around him and knocked it away with his right hand. Great technique. Or to go from the back of the end zone. Paul lets it say a lot of bounds. And we're two minutes deep into the fourth. All Nebraska, the number 24 team in the country. About to go three and one, rest of the Big 12 teams. Friday night, we saw it. Missouri struggled a bit with Nevada, ended up with a 10-point victory. Kansas and Southern miss, real shootout in the first half. And Kansas prevails by seven. Wildcats all over Tennessee Tech. And Texas, no problem with UTEP. 24-10 Iowa State as they start the fourth. Oklahoma State all over Grambling. Baylor in the third quarter. And 42-12 in favor of A&M. Houston, Texas Tech trying to get you a score as we move along throughout the night on that one. Of course, the first two scores there, Missouri and Kansas, scores that Nebraska fans are keeping close eye on because we travel to Columbia next Thursday and we go to Lawrence for a couple of big road games in the Big 12 North. And you know, anything short of a Big 12 North title this year for Nebraska is going to be disappointing to the staff, to our players, to our fan base. The expectations are high this year. And that's okay. Yeah. You know, expectations need to stay high around here because once losing, if it ever becomes acceptable, that's bad for any program. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And Bo Pelini would echo those sentiments and he talked with us earlier about the Big 12 Conference here in 09. People are picking us to win the North, and I've heard that, and people are saying they wanted to pat us on the back for what we did a year ago. We didn't do anything a year ago. We didn't win a championship, and that's the only thing to worry about at Nebraska is winning championships. And until we're there, we won't be satisfied. Well, there you have it. And that's what I mean, is, is keeping those expectations high. We should expect to win the North every single year get into the big 12 championship game and have a shot to make it to a bcs game and, and get in the conversation for national titles cody green the freshman backup quarterback in there early moments fourth quarter zach lee as green gets taken down a gain of a couple zach lee was solid here tonight 15 of 18 for 238 yards and a touchdown. What were your impressions of uh, Zach this evening? He did everything they asked him to do. And now he's signaling in the place. He's doing everything. And what more do you want? 15 of 18, 238 and a touch. And he's laughing on the sidelines now. Well, they're teaching him, I think. I don't think he's ever done it before. He's, he just knows how to read the signals. I don't know if he's ever actually called the signals in. <laughs> That's probably why they're laughing. <laughs> Green finds the tight end, or rather the fullback, it's Legate, and he gets a first down and inside the 25-yard line. And this is a nice touch pass. Watch Cody Green go to his right, and he has to get it up over a defender. He doesn't, <laughs> but it gets tipped, and Legate then just about takes out Kyrie Cooper. Anytime you have a fullback who catches a pass and starts going north and south, watch out. Just get out of the way. Now 11, by my count, 11 different receivers have caught a pass here tonight. As Burkhead runs hard off the right side, 11 different players have caught a pass. Burkhead, one of them. I like those helmets. I do too. Look at those helmets. I think maybe we ought to pull those out every once in a while. I think so too. I know they're auctioning, auctioning them off. And uh, last night at the 62 banquet, each player got a helmet, a brand new helmet with their number on it. Look at that. See, that's the blue collar. Rex <laughs> Burkhead, you see those scratches on there? Yep. On the close up? Great camera work there, guys. See the scratches on the helmet? 
That's what they love about him. <laughs> he hasn't, he's only played 12 snaps. Uh huh. And his helmet's beat up. <laughs> the coach has said, you know what you're going to get with Burkett. He's only a freshman, and of course, there's a learning curve, but what you ask is what he provides. But someone bids on his helmet. I think it might be I'm guessing. I, I might, I might get it. I wanted to get one last night. All the guys got one with the, and then, and then they gave away, I think, five more helmets that had 62 on it. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if there was anybody on that team that was 62. At least it was at the banquet last night. Burkhead takes the shovel pass, sheds a tackler, still on his feet, inside the five. Burkhead into the end zone. Touchdown, Rex Burkhead. And look at that celebration. You think he's popular? Think the guys like his mentality and what he brings to the table? Freshman to freshman, Cody Green to Rex Burkett. 24 yards in the score. 47 to nothing. Make it 48. All Huskers tonight. Burkhead into the end zone with some tough running after the catch. It's been a fun night here in Lincoln. Freshman to freshman. Forty-eight to nothing. Four minutes into the fourth. Rex Burkhead into the end zone. Cody Green retreats a little bit, draws the defense up the field, and then just shovels it forward to Burkhead. You see that move where he put the left hand on the ground. You see running backs do that drill every day in practice. Look, lose his balance, put the left hand down, keep his feet, get up field, shed another tackler. And you saw the pad level. I talked about that earlier, how low he stays, that center of gravity. He doesn't get knocked off his feet very much. Second touchdown of the year for Burkhead. Kanalik tees it up. Scoring drive was brief. Well into the back of the end zone. And another first down from the 20. Nebraska looking for that shutout. It's been a while. 2006 versus Troy, and that's the only thing Bo Pelini is thinking about right now, guaranteed. 39 games in a row, they haven't been able to get that shut out. And these black shirts, they want it. And all those guys that are that were the starters, they're over there on the sidelines now. They want these guys that are second and third string to bow their necks and not allow the Raging Cages to go down the field to get any points. Inside handoff with us. Husker defense dead last in the Big 12 in 2007. Gave up 40, 477 yards a game all the way to second last year. And they're even better, right thinks Carl Bellini here in 09. Oh, they are, and they're, and they're more deep. I mean, they have guys that they feel really comfortable with coming off the bench and giving short stints to different players. Josh Williams, number 98. You just saw there at rush in one of those guys. McGuire in trouble. McGuire sacks back at the 15 by Dillard. We haven't seen much of Philip Dillard tonight because Nebraska has been in the nickel most of the evening. There he gets the tackle. Comes up the field, number 52, really came back last week and played well after he'd kind of been in the doghouse, hadn't played much the first couple of weeks. And the Polinis gave him a shot at Virginia Tech. And Dillard as a senior came out and proved himself again. And he's gonna get a lot of playing time the rest of the season. Injured for the final four games of last year. Didn't play the first two this year. McGuire again under duress. Throws it away, partially blocked. Pressure by Meredith off the edge. See the frustration in McGuire, but, but Dillard's an interesting guy. He's had injury problems, as you see Meredith on the replay. But Dillard and, and the rest of this linebacking core, 
Uh, they got about seven guys, so the depth not a problem. And week by week, Coach Polini says they grow and grow. Last year at this time, they coaches would say something, and they looked at them like they had three eyes. This year, he says it's two-way communication. And, and like you said, they're just getting better, all these younger guys. How about that move? Burkhead, the 40 of the Raging Cajuns as he continues to make plays. Flashback to last season, homecoming, the Missouri game. Chase Daniel. First, first drive of the game. There was Macklin going all the way down the field for the touchdown. Joe Gans in the offense really didn't get anything going. And it was a route, 52 to seven. One of the worst defeats Nebraska had seen. Although there were a couple in years prior, in the immediate year prior that we wanted to forget about too. I just don't think Nebraska saw that coming last year as Kyrie Cooper makes a nice play. But 52 to 17, yeah. no one was expecting that here in Memorial Stadium a year ago. That was an embarrassing moment for Bo Pelini. Obviously he wasn't very happy. It was the most points given up at home by the Huskers since 1945. Lost three of last four homecoming games. Part of that comes down to who you play on homecoming. No, I mean, yeah. let's choose some. <laughs> let's choose a game we know we're going to win. Well, this year it's Lafayette. And this is Green to the outside and Green to the pylon. Touchdown, Nebraska. Rex Burkhead gets a touchdown. Now Cody Green gets a touchdown. He's thrown for one on the shovel pass, and now he runs one in. Watch the strides here. He is, he's really moving, folks. He's 6'4", 6'5", and it doesn't appear that it's maybe running that fast, but those are long strides. Yeah. He is covering some ground. 55 to nothing, Nebraska. 8.46 to play. Second touchdown this season, rushing for Cody Green. This one goes for 24. Look at the blocks on the edge. Kyrie Cooper, Brandon Kinney, both wideouts really locked up on the two defensive backs. And when it's 48 to nothing at the time and you're playing DB, the last thing you want to do is have new wide receivers come into the game that really want to block you. Because you don't want to spend the energy getting off of that block and then facing that man at 240 pounds coming around the end at you. Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe he's not quite that big, <laughs> but he's big. <laughs> he's a big guy. Big freshman with a lot of talent. Let's send it back down to Kent as we've talked all night about great memories here in the stadium. You know, uh, this has been about memories this week, the 300 straight sellouts and the most memorable play, and I've been, I was at the first one and I'm here tonight for the 300th, was a run by Gail Sayers back in 1963. I was just beyond the end line of the south end zone, watching Gail Sayers take the ball at the one yard line, peel down the left sideline, the west sideline for 99 yards. The most memorable play I've seen in the 300 straight sellouts. Sayers himself said it was the highlight of his college career. It happened right here back in November of 1963. Great stuff, Kent. Kent's seen He's, a lot of games here. He's seen a couple. And I'll give a shout out to Mr. Pavelka because when you think about, we've talked about all the great people that have been involved with this program. And you talk about the coaches and the administration and obviously the players that have played here. But Kent has been around for nearly all of this, either calling the games or as a big fan, 12 years as play-by-play -play voice, mm -hmm. 10 years prior to that as the color voice. So uh, thanks to Kent for all he has done for Nebraska football. Yep. I, I was teasing him last night at dinner with that game in 1962, the first sellout, and he, he says he was there. I said, well, did you just get out of college? <laughs> Remaining games, 12 days till the Missouri game on the road. They get the bye next week, does Nebraska, then at Mizzou, then home for Tech and Iowa State. Big Oklahoma game on the 7th of November, right here in Lincoln.
Look at this. At, 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 and at. Mm. Those are the keys. Obviously, Oklahoma at home is a big game. And every game in the North is big. But that game next Thursday is just huge. Because the winner of that game is feeling pretty good for the rest of the season. And it by no means wraps up the North. But it could very easily come down to a tie at the end of the year. And that tiebreaker goes to the head-to-head -head matchup. And I'll tell you what, if Nebraska gets a W there, and there, then they're feeling really good about these two. Yeah. But if you if you go down to Missouri and you lose in Columbia, and you're three and two coming back home for a Texas Tech team that's scary. I mean, they played Texas tough. That is not a gimme win even at home. Texas Tech will come ready to play. They battled the Longhorns tough last week. No doubt about that. Kaler makes the stop. Third string quarterback Blaine Gucci. In for Louisiana Lafayette. Seven and a half minutes ish until the first shutout <laughs> in three years. That's the only thing the defensive coaches over there are thinking about right now. It's third down and one. And Gucci under center. Up the middle. Yobis Walker trying to push the pile. And he gets the first down. Move the chains here for the Raging Cajuns. Clock stops at 7.22. I told you about the event last night that I was able uh -huh. to MC with the 1962 team. I know I've mentioned it a few times now, but it was just a, it was just a really nice evening, which is why I've talked about it so many times. But I was able to meet uh, one, of the, one of the players on that team, Curtis Bryant, this is his name, from Osceola, Nebraska. Now he lives in Seattle, Washington, hasn't been back to Nebraska in years and years and years, uh, but wanted to come back uh, for the reunion. Um, he's lived in Washington for 35 years, I think. Well, he told me that he came into town on Thursday knowing that his daughter was giving birth to his grandbaby on Thursday, and she told him, I know this means a lot to you. I want you to go to Lincoln. And so he will obviously go home and be able to see his grandson, I believe. Uh -huh. But that's how much it means uh, to that team even, who won three games the year before, and then turns it around, goes and wins nine games in 1962, and that's what started everything for Nebraska football 47 years ago. Mm -hmm. That's what got momentum. That's what gave everybody in Nebraska something to be proud of. It really unified everybody in the state. It gave everybody something to rally around. So those guys in 1962, guys like Curtis Bryan from Osceola, Nebraska, uh -huh is really what started to build the history and tradition of Nebraska football. And of course, Bob Devaney leads him to back to back national titles in 70 and 71. That was a quick turnaround though from 61 to 62. Absolutely. The, went to the Gotham Bowl that year, beat Miami 36 to 34 in a game that was you know, freezing rain and snow and just a miserable day. A couple of the guys last night said that, I think they said there were 1,700 fans there, but they thought there weren't any fans there. And they said if there were 1,700, I don't know where they were because I don't think anybody was there. Yeah, inside Yankee Stadium, too. Inside Yankee Stadium. You can find some places to hide. They're trying to bring back a bowl in Yankee Stadium. Not sure what the latest is. A couple of days ago, even the New York paper, it's uh, still on the table to get that going in the next couple of years. Pretty cool thing. Middle Walker, tough running as he spins down. Talked about that Gotham Bowl and the two-point win. You know, I was looking at the stats, and it wasn't even close. When you look at uh, total yardage, I mean, it was like twice as many yards for the Miami Hurricanes. But somehow, Nebraska, first downs again, you know, way bigger stats. Absolutely. Absolutely. Last game able to pull it off. A lot of the guys talked about last night just going to New York City, the experience of it all. And how exciting it was to just, just to be at a bowl game, first of all, mm -hmm. then to go to New York City and, you know, flying there on a different plane than they had ever been on to go all the way to the coast. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. Dennis Claridge was the quarterback on that team. Had a chance to talk with Dennis last night, and he still looks like he could play. Yeah. You, well, you were saying that I about 75% of the guys looked like He that. was 210, and, and when he played, he, he's got to be 
right near that now, and, and he looks like he's 40. <laughs> and it's amazing. All those guys really looked good last night. Ball carry by number 26, Yildiz Walker. Yildiz Walker gets a couple, brings up third down and about six. You know. 55 to nothing game. Nebraska will go to three and one at the bye week and then on the road against the Tigers, a team that we've talked off and on tonight about the Big 12. Not exactly sure what to make of the Tigers so far, but I can tell you Blaine Gabbard has been pretty impressive and he was good last night against the Val. He's more athletic than I thought he would be. He really moves around well. Of course, has that strong arm as well. We all thought he was gonna be right here in Lincoln. And dropped was Gucci. Taylor in May there. Colton Taylor able to come up and make the stick. Watch him run downhill. Read this play. Boom. Watch his pad level here. That is a form tackle. Form tackle at its finest. Meredith there as well. He's been good. Reserve defensive end. Into the end zone. And touchback, he comes out to the 20 with 2.47 to play. Nebraska with a comfortable lead for Bo Pelini, about to go 13 and five here in Lincoln. And break time from Memorial Stadium. All Huskers on this Saturday night in prime time. 55 to nothing, closing moments here tonight from Lincoln, Big 12 North. Pretty much wide open, we see the uh, schedule coming up, a couple of buys in there, including for this Nebraska team and the Missouri game, um, and the Missouri team as they get ready for that matchup in uh, a little less than two weeks. KU also has an off week next week before facing Iowa State. Iowa State with Kansas State next weekend. Colorado at West Virginia. How about that program right now? In some trouble. We knew it wasn't looking good when uh, Toledo hung about a half a hundred on him a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> Travius Washington, third quarterback of the game for the Huskers. Gives to Austin Jones. Nebraska leading by 55, five scoring drives under two minutes, five touchdowns. Talked about red zone problems last week. Not tonight though. No, they were very efficient. And when a play was put in front of them, they made the play. When an interception was able to be had, they made the catch. A pick six by Larry Asante, a big play in this game as well. That just shows you the explosion that this offense can show. Guys that can really make big plays down the field. Kerensky Gillian with a couple of long receptions here tonight. Chris Brooks has played well. Zach Lee had a good one. The bounce back game for him. Latravius Washington will clean things up here at the end. Junior from Bradenton, Florida. To his right is Lester Ward. Washington keeps. Washington to the 37. The Travis Washington is a tremendous athlete. Moved over from the linebacker position to play quarterback when Nebraska was left a little bit short-handed going into the spring. Played well in the red-white game in April and has really shown some promise. I mean, he's a solid third-string quarterback. How deep can you do you want to be? I mean, obviously, Cody Green is a solid number two. But if you ever had to go to the number three quarterback, well, Travis Washington is a very physical guy and has a really strong arm. Sometimes accuracy an issue, but he can obviously run with it. And Latravis takes it again. Gets the first down. Stop the clock. 47 seconds. The Travis Washington Jr. from Florida. We've seen a couple of different guys in there to 
get a touch with Austin Jones, Lester Ward. A lot of different receivers tonight, a lot of contributors, and that's, uh, as you touched on, a big positive about these games. Bo has a new sweatshirt this year. It looks good. See that, the gray, mm -hmm. sharp. Give to Jones, making tackles. Should be the final play here. Nebraska talked this week that they would come back and play with passion. But this was a character building opportunity after that gut wrenching loss at Blacksburg. And they responded. Bo Pelini and the Huskers with a resounding victory here tonight on the 300th straight sellout at Memorial Stadium. Bellini's troops with a 55 to nothing victory, and they close out the non-conference portion of the schedule with three wins to one loss. Just a dominating performance over 400 yards of offense and creating three turnovers. Zach Lee with a nice showing here tonight, and Bo Pelini, although expressed he wasn't very happy with 34 to nothing at halftime, I think now feels really good about the shutout in a 55 to nothing win going into conference play. Nice momentum booster for this Nebraska team, a team that needed to bounce back after last weekend, and they did that. So the shot of Zach Lee, he went 15 of 18 for 238 and a touchdown. Hillou didn't play much in the second half. Finishes 15 carries, 83 yards, two scores. Burkhead got in there to contribute. He found the end zone, Chris Brooks, three catches, 50 yards. So a lot of different guys get a touch. The two teams kneel for a silent prayer at midfield. Good scene here in Lincoln. A lot of good scenes over the last 47 years during this sellout streak. Let's head down to Kent. Uh, Coach, what a special night tonight. You know, we met Friday, and I asked you if even though you lost, since you lost last week, if you maybe got better uh, as a result of Virginia Tech, and you said, ask me after the game. I think we did. I'm just happy uh, that our football team came out. I said to you, early in the week, I said, I guarantee you'll come out and play with passion and with great effort, and uh, they did that tonight. I'm proud of how they responded to last week. Uh, that was a heartbreaker last week. We moved on, and now the, now the season starts. Uh, we're going to the Big 12 play. Exactly, and you got some extra time between games. Good thing, bad thing? I think it's a good thing. I think we need to get healthy, and uh, I'm looking forward to the opener, but you know, enjoy a couple days and, and relax a little bit, get our team uh, healthy, and then we got a long season ahead of us. Ricky Tenars, okay. Uh, Larry Asante? It's a little hard to say. I think they'll be okay. I know I know Asante is. It's a little bit up in the air how Ricky is, but fortunately we came out of it pretty much healthy. Did you get to enjoy any of the, take in any of the special evening? You know, it was uh, obviously, you know, it's a tribute to these fans and the people of the state of Nebraska. And, and uh, unfortunately, I can't enjoy it as much as they can, but it's, uh, it's, it was a special night here. It was, uh, it was a great, great, uh, great atmosphere tonight. Stay here with your kids for the fireworks, man. There you go. I hear you. Congratulations. Thank you. Bo Pelini after Nebraska's homecoming victory. In Cajuns of Louisiana Lafayette, 55 to nothing on homecoming. Back up to you guys. Kent, a big victory, and uh, as you guys talked about, a big night here in Lincoln. We're back to wrap it up after this 55 to nothing Nebraska win.